Thank you for coming back to the rear view mirror of an Uber driver. This is the first in the series of Uber stories that I'm going to share with you from my book called The Joy of Uber Driving, A Wild Ride to Self-Love. And this one is called Andy and is in the fifth chapter from the, uh, that's called What's Love Got to Do With It? A song sung by Tina Turner. Now all my chapters are song titles from the 60s, 70s, and 80s, and this chapter chronicles my life in Hollywood as an aspiring actress, or rather, a wannabe actress, which meant I was a natural target for powerful men and or con artists who exert their will on me. You might say I was one of many hashtag me too victims, a moniker that was unknown at that time was a very dark period in my life, but one that taught me a whole lot of lessons. So Andy landed in chapter five because it seemed to fit. So I'm gonna be reading it to you at this point. Uber sent me to a home in Tiburon where a short, stocky man with a full head of curly black hair came out of the front door and waved at me as he headed toward the car. He looked comical as he struggled to pick up speed with his short, fat legs while pulling a large piece of luggage behind him. He finally made it to the car and I opened the trunk and helped him lift the bag up and in. Wiping the sweat from his brow, he smiled and thanked me. Breathing rather heavily, he managed to stuff himself into the back seat of the car as I pulled the front passenger seat up to give him more room. I asked if he wanted a bottle of water and he accepted it gratefully. He said his name was Andy. He was a stand-up comedian and had a gig in San Diego that weekend. He reminded me so much of someone I knew a long time ago who was also an actor and a comedian. <clears throat> As we were driving, suddenly he contorted his face into a pout and messed up his hair imitating a well-known celebrity called Donald Trump. I'll tell you a really huge secret. When I'm president of the United States, I'm going to cover the White House with gold leaf. Then I'll feel comfortable living in it. He cracked up at his own joke and said he'd just thought of it. Maybe I'll use that tomorrow night, he said. I cracked up too, but then added, it would be no joke if he actually did become president. We both became morbidly silent for a good five minutes, and then he said, moving on, seen any good movies lately? I welcomed his change of subject and said, no, I'm too busy living my own movie. <clears throat> he liked that. We chatted amicably all the way to the airport and it really felt like I had known him from another lifetime. We shook hands and he with his short legs and stubby fingers totting a large suitcase disappeared in the terminal as another call came in. Now I'm going to read the last two paragraphs of this chapter, which will tell you who Andy reminded me of. Shortly after Rasputin exited stage left, <clears throat> Rasputin is the name I gave one of my uh, more unsavory characters. A big, sweet, chubby, middle-aged character actor named Stanley took a liking to me. He drove an MG sports car, which made him look kind of ridiculous with his big frame stuffed into such a small space. Yes, this is the man Andy reminded me of. He liked to make me laugh with his many character impersonations and we enjoyed each other's company. Soon we became lovers and he made me his mistress. However, this arrangement didn't last long because he walked into my apartment one day unannounced while I was rehearsing a love scene in a play for which a friend and I were auditioning. We all looked at each other shocked. My friend had no idea I had a lover with a key my lover didn't know I was rehearsing a play, 
and I wasn't expecting him to show up in the middle of the afternoon when I would normally be attending classes at UCLA. His unannounced visitation marked the official end of our affair. Since he didn't believe me. Turns out, I was a better actor than I thought as far as the love scene was concerned, but apparently a terrible actor when it came to trying to convince him I was just acting. Now, so much for my dreams of love and stardom, but I still didn't get it. These star-studded illusions called opportunities continued to tempt me at every turn looking completely new and different and more promising each time. But it was always the same song, trying to tell me that it had nothing to do with love or my soul's purpose. Doggedly, I put another nickel in and played it over and over and over again. That's the end of chapter five and Andy. It seems like it took forever to learn my lessons with these experiences, but I did, as we all do, if we give ourselves half a chance and learn to forgive ourselves. My takeaway was that I have, may have been a wannabe actress, but at least I tried. I said yes and went down that bumpy road, however bruised and beat up I got, I kept on going. Well, I hope you enjoyed this and got something out of it for you. So tune in next week and I'll have another story to tell. Who knows? Maybe it'll be about you or someone you know or someone you'd like to know. If you can't wait, go ahead and buy my book in Amazon or any bookstore. Thank you and see you again soon.